Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you all of the awesome tools built for this project. Let's already start with one of the main tools, which is the house or building generator. So based on boxes, we can generate full buildings. We have a lot of control in this tool and you can really define which style and which models you could use. If you have any new models, you can plug them in the tool and the building will work fine. Then we have the fence tool, so you can draw a curve and it will instance models, but it will also make sure we have enough models in the corner. So we'll create a unique corner piece to make sure it handles multiple situations for every environment. Then here we have a platforming tool, so you can define a certain space where you want a platform to be. You assign the space to the tool and the tool will generate a platform for it. So it will generate a wooden part and also this border. So we can place the box where we want, we can copy another box, we can create a bigger platform, we can assign multiple boxes of course, and then we have a final platform. We can play around with some of the settings, we can automatically place fences, we can change the, sh the shape of the wood, and so on. There are multiple settings here you can play around with. So then we have tools for the ad boards in the scene. So in Houdini, we can generate animation textures. We can use these animation textures inside of a shader. So here are a couple examples of that. And we can just jump into the shader. We can load in the data of Houdini and we can change things on the fly. If we're not happy with something, we can just swap out textures and we can have new cool results. This tool also works together with a actual billboard maker. So we can actually have geometry or a proper framing around this ad board. We can also go into the back panel and we can start changing up things. We can add some more agreeable noises. We can also just decide to have a, both faces to have a panel. And then further, we can just play around with the settings to have something interesting. Then we have, of course, our cable tool. So based on the curve you draw, we will have a cable generated from that. So what is interesting with this here is we can actually start to add simulation properties. So we can just say what certain collision we have, and then we can interact or do a simulation in real time inside of the game. So now we are properly having simulated cables here on this building. Then we also have a clot simulation. So we can decide what objects the clot needs to be on, and we can do a proper simulation. There are a couple settings you can play around with. You can define the quality, you can define how many wrinkles they are, the weight of the clot, and so on. Now replacing this original plane, this is where my clots should be, we will recalculate and then we have a different result. So we can just put this where we want it to be and then recalculate the simulation and then have a new result. So we have a lot of control in where we can place clots in the scene or on objects. Then a construction tool. So this is basically scattering or placing around these construction types asset. So you can place your own assets, you can use the assets that they are. And of course, this also works based on a box. So you can place a box, we can assign the box to the tool and it will automatically uh, calculate there. We can also rotate the box in different directions, so it will work in multiple ways. And we can just turn around, play around with this until we find something uh, that fits our needs. So we can scale up the box quickly. Uh, we can replace it by just placing the box somewhere else. And we can, for example, create a big structure under underneath this building here. Um, so we can easily create something that looks complex. Then we have another cable tool that is just for electric cables. And this will automatically uh, scatter cables based on buildings. So we'll look at the buildings that are close by and it will just scatter cables on that. This is, can be useful to quickly add some more cable details and you can just see we can quickly add a lot of detail by just placing around simple curves and points. Uh, this was really useful here for again adding some electric wires. Then we have a IV generator. So we can click the objects we want the IV to be on, the tool will calculate and we have some cool looking IV. We can further again play around some settings, we can enable some certain properties to make it even more interesting. We can also have hanging parts of the IV, so in parts where we have a sloped area, we will have hanging IV. We can define different styles and types of IV. We can also of course add way more IV than we want, so we can add a lot of this if we want it to be. We can also go into a simulation option where we can simulate actually IV falling down as you can see. Uh, and you can play around of course with parameters to fine tune this. Then we also have a tool for generating street lamps. This tool can generate small street lamps like you see here, but also could generate bigger street lamps uh, for in our scene. So we can play around with again multiple parameters. We can define different types of presets that are built in there and we can just from there start to play around with some of these settings. 
Then we have one of our, our pipe tools, which is based for my curve. So we draw a curve and the pipe will follow that curve. Interesting here is that we can also add smaller cables or pipes around this bigger pipe and we can play around with the settings. We can add a lot of them if we want a lot of creeple and we can add some more noising to these pipes if we want to have some more detail. Then another pipe tool is based from boxes. So we just place boxes in our scene and then we can say to the tool, create a cable in those boxes. So we'll find a certain path in there and it will create those pipes. We can play around with this and add more pipes so we can add multiple versions or layers. We can have a big pipe, we can have some small pipes going through the big pipes. We can add multiple versions of pipes going to each other. This also supports rotation so we can rotate boxes. Then we have a scaffolding tool. So the scaffolding tool by itself, we can either just play around with the parameters built in and we can now have different styles, of course. And again, we can also define this based from a box. So we can grab a box, we can define that this should be our scaffolding area, and then we just link this to the tool. Then the scaffolding will automatically update to this, and then we have a new result. So from there, we can just play around with the box instead of the tool. We can just define the area, we can make something larger, we can copy the box, make a smaller one, it can collide with the other box and it will just merge in the tool to create this scaffolding area. Then we have this script tool so we can quickly create script or bushes for our scene. Yes, multiple settings you can play around with. You can, you can choose a base shape like a cone or a box or a sphere. And from there, you can start defining certain elements. Uh, you can always go back, of course, to the main shape and say, I want something else. Uh, you can play around with this until you're happy with the shape. Then we have a stacking tool. So we're going to again define an area where we want a certain tool to be happening. In this case, we want to stack objects. So we're going to enable here a data table. And this data table holds the props to be scattered. So here we are now scattering or stacking uh, these objects specifically in that area. So we can quickly, for example, uh, add props to the boat uh, for carrying these crates. Another tool here will be then stairs from boxes. So here we have one box, we'll generate a stairs. So we can place the box where we want the stairs to be. We can define the properties on how they should look. And we can also, of course, add materials. Uh, we can add handrails. We can also do a bending of the stairs if you need a certain bend effect. But also we can start a, an actual Boolean operation inside of the game engine here. So I can define, I only need this part so we can extract uh, a certain part of the stairs. So we can really customize the stairs here uh, for that specific location. And here is a procedural train. So here in Houdini, we can define how long the train should be, what certain models or modular models it should use. And we can also have an automatic rigging system out of the box. So let's say I make my train longer and I use different modules. I just gonna make sure I'm gonna update my uh, rig and I can automatically here have a new uh, rig for that. So we can add more and more and more. We can make this train as long as you want. We just click update and we will have a new rig and skinning for this. This is all done automatically. Then we have a tree tool. So with this uses the labs tree tools, which you can already try out. Here is like a sort of like a collapsed version of this. So we can quickly generate a couple trees for the scene. And we have multiple sliders to play around with to define certain shapes of this tree. This also uses something which is called a pivot painter, which is then being used for uh, in Unreal Engine. And in Unreal Engine here, you can see that there is some small wind. And with the pivot painter, you can see that there is some small movement uh, of wind in this tree. Then we have the characters from Vertex Animation. So we have a basic animation here and I'm going to export the vertex animation of that. Important here is actually the first frame needs to be the static pose so we can reuse it later on. So here in Unreal, I'm going to quickly decorate the scene. And what you can see is that with each position change, I will also sometimes change, for example, the color of the t-shirt or I will change actually the different clothing that the person is wearing. So this allows us to quickly decorate the scene with humans and also have variation with each copy of them automatically out of the box so we don't have to manually tweak that. So that was it for this video. So uh, this video I showed you most of the tools used in this project. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.